Hey everybody, we're going to be talking about Space Controller today. This is a, a plugin and an app from Sound Particles. Uh, this isn't brand new, but it's something I've just been getting into lately. And uh, this whole, it, it blows my mind what some people are thinking of and, and how they're implementing it. And this is an example of something that if you're doing anything with spatial audio, immersive audio, or even just stereo and binaural, this is something that uh, I think could really add something. So what this is, is a, a panning app. That's as simple as you can say it. And uh, the key here, or the cool thing here, is that they have an app for iOS, and this app allows us to pan by moving and using the, the onboard sensors of the device. So I come through, I turn on the panning, and then I can move this around and it pans. Not just in left and right terms, but in the full 360 sphere. So here's a synth. I'm just gonna rotate this and show you the circle first. Put on headphones if you're not listening on headphones already because this is converting it to binaural for the moment. Uh, technically, my signal flow goes synthesizer, which is a stereo input right here. And you can see there's a bunch of uh, options grayed out because I don't have that configuration set up. And then on the output, I've got stereo, XY, MS, Bloomline, binaural, LCR, uh, some quad formats, and then first order ambisonics, because I am doing this with ambisonics. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this with ambisonics is because uh, I often do things with ambisonics for video projects for YouTube. And um, I also have the NX tools from Waves. And this is a really cool way to see exactly what's happening with our information. So let me switch this over to mono mode. It's going to combine the signals. But it allows us to see with the NX tool exactly what's happening with the panning. Let's go up and behind. We can also go down below. Now, because you're getting this in some version of binaural, which means it's relying on uh, headphone proximity to your ears and a bunch of psychoacoustic principles in order to replicate spatial audio, you're going to hear some of the sounds float around you, but it's going to be hard to really pinpoint where they are. It's uh, hard to localize with binaural because we don't get to use the, our head movement to actually you know, track where things are happening. If you move your head, the whole image still shifts. But uh, with something like the NX tool from Waves, if I were to put on the head tracker uh, and use that, I'd be able to hear that actually quite nicely. Uh, and if you're using something like an Oculus um, Quest or MetaQuest, um, then you're able to, you know, put that video all around you and you'll have the, the head motion to help you localize things. Uh, when it's just binaural, it's a little trickier. So what's the deal with this plugin? There's a number of different parameters, all designed to help us uh, move things around how, how we might need to. We have the mono mode and that puts everything into one. You can move it around as a single source. We can do independent sources we can do rotation mode, which keeps it at whatever the image is and just lets us rotate it on a, on a fixed plane. And then we have mirror mode or symmet you know, symmetric mode, um, which allows us to really move things. It mirrors the specified position vertically. Cool. Okay. So that's everything else just helps us with those parameters. We have our X, Y, Z. Some of these we can lock down. I've noticed when you turn on the advanced options, we do get additional things. 
Uh, not all of them can be locked down. I believe in here with the rotation mode, we don't get to lock anything down or go vertical. Um, and then the symmetric mode, we can lock them down again. So if we want to fix a point along the z-axis or the vertical axis, then we can lock it at a certain point and just go x, y, or we can go front to back if we want to. Uh, this is uh, Those are all useful things. We have a couple other options here. We also have above only, so it won't let it go to the bottom part, above and below, and then magnetic. It's going to snap the handle to the nearest speaker position. Okay, so some options. None of that is the coolest thing. Uh, we do have, before we get to the what I consider the coolest thing, um, we do have sphere mode, just a different way to look at it and different way to function. Um, and then we can also right click on this and say back perspection or perspective. And um, then we see things a little differently like that. All right, so we move, I'm just moving the phone around different places and you'll see. So a lot of this is visual feedback. There is on, on the actual app, the ability to reposition set to front. And um, that becomes important. It does shift quite a bit over time if you're doing the crazy things. Um, and you can set different uh, things. So if like, for instance, in this mode, our left point can be link one. That's on the app as link one. The right we can set up as link two which then means we can move, we can switch the app by pushing one button to go to number two and then move the right thing so we can pan them independently. Uh, all of that's great. What occurred to me through all of this is that this is more than just a fancy iPhone panning thing. That part is super cool. Being able to move this around and, uh, and have that tactile thing happen rather than always using a mouse or even a control surface or even a screen on a control surface, which doesn't do the vertical part very easily. This tool is essentially an audio conversion tool in some ways. So stereo input, I can convert my audio from stereo audio into first order ambisonics and I believe it goes all the way up to six order ambisonics if you're using a program like Reaper or something that can handle all of those outputs. Logic does not let you do anything above first order ambisonics, but it can go, let's see, 22.2. I mean, we're looking at some, uh, some large numbers. It's hard to read because they're grayed out, um, but a lot. I mean, this is one of the things that Sound Particles is known for handling these massive formats and uh, and doing so just kind of what appears so casual with their plugins uh, and yet to be able to convert between those. So you can really convert between anything in this left input into anything in the right output and uh, that's incredible. I mean, that's just like mind blowing that this is included in there. To do the same thing, um, minus the head tracking function, um, you know, the B360 set inside waves is like hundreds and hundreds of dollars more than this plugin here. And this one is still being updated and you can do more. And I think they're really paying a lot of attention to it, whereas the Waves um, is really, the B system is kind of showing its age. They're not doing anything with it. And it's just ambisonics, which this is so much more than ambisonics. It's uh, pretty much all the formats. Now, that being said, um, there's a few things I want to talk about right after I talk about the price of this. This is not a sponsored video or anything. Um, I do know the guys over at uh, Sound Particles. They've guest lectured in my class. Um, I, I know them, but this isn't like a paid promo or anything. I just really love this product. Um, the basic one, which allows you to connect with Bluetooth, it just gives you a few of the formats, stereo, binaural, first order ambisonics, and 5.1, $100. Uh, and uh, you need a phone if you want to use that functionality. That's a, an iOS device. If you want the full thing with all of the formats, um, it looks like right now they have a deal for 
$300. And academic pricing, I don't, let's see, what is that? Um, not that one. They have so many other products we should talk about. It looks like it's $200 for the full one um, instead of $300. That is worth it, I think. So how we're going to use this, um, we're going to be able to play our songs and do panning. Let's switch this back to uh, rotation mode for a second. Could you do that type of panning with a mouse? Of course, that is not that complicated. But to be able to have that performance element is very cool. So listen, I'm just going to be showing you one other use that I thought was kind of interesting that I um, was messing around with. Let's see if we can do this. So the drums in this case are one of the areas that I did a little bit of programming. Uh, so I have the snare, let's see, yeah, the snare top going out to a reverb, or is it the snare bottom, it's one of them, yeah, plus three right there. Going out to this reverb, and then I used the space controller. I put the track into touch mode for automation, and then as I moved it, um, I would let the snare hit, and then I would move the reverb into the rear. So just the reverb gets moved into the rear after it in the initial hit. So let me play this for you a little bit with nothing else. So you can see, I, I think I was a little cavalier with the left and it went back to the right a little bit at the end. Um, it's a little tricky, I think, at first to get used to the panning element of the phone and figuring out exactly which way you're making it go as you you know float it in the air. A lot of it is visual feedback, but also listening and making sure that um, you're hearing what it's doing. There's obviously a slight amount of delay in this it's unavoidable given that you're using Bluetooth or even over Wi-Fi, um, but it's minimal. And I think for most sweeping things, it's really, really clever way to do this. Okay, let me know what your thoughts are about this. I think I'm curious to see if any of you look at this and think, wow, I really wish I had that or wow, that's kind of gimmicky and it'd be a waste of my time. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it because I know that for me, there's going to be times that I want to use this when I'm doing spatial uh, audio things, when I'm doing ambisonic things, and I want to pan uh, like a specific sound around. I'm not going to use this in my music mixing where I'm putting a guitar and uh, you know my overheads and stuff. I mean, that I'm still going to use my mouse for because I'm setting and leaving and forgetting. Um, but this, maybe for some really specialized things, it could be very useful, especially in the immersive audio world. Let me know what you think.